Joe, one of the ways, so this is division, one of the ways to uh, interpret division is we are splitting a number into an equal number of parts. For example, dividing six by three is two, because if we split six into three equal pieces, each piece is two. Perfect. How do we make sense of this when dividing by a non-integer such as 1.3 or 0.7? What does it mean to split 6 into 0.7? Uh, so 3 into 2 pieces uh, or 1 point converted to fractions. Okay. Converted to fractions and you can look at it in the integer form. Okay or uh, into 0.7 or 1.3 equal parts. Does this way of interpreting division just not make sense when dealing with non-integers? I would say division to me is fractions, right? So think about it this way. Let's take a look, right? So let's say you're doing this. Uh, for your example, you're dividing six by three or two. Uh, uh, dividing six by three is two because three pieces so if you do it visually right if you got six right uh well let's do it just by numbers let's do it by numbers so if you're doing six divided by three right now the division if you're going to do this convert to multiplication right six times and this is three over one and when you're doing this you flip this and it becomes one over three right so six times one over three and six is just over one. This turns into six divided by three, which is equal to two. So you're taking six, breaking it into three pieces that have two each, right? So let's deal with a fraction. Let's say you're taking six and dividing it by 0 0.7, right? So 0 0.7 convert to a fraction, okay? So this becomes 6 divided by 0 0.7 is a fraction is 7 over 10, right? Now, how do you do division? You do division by going 6, you change it to multiplication, and you flip this. So it becomes 10 over 7, right? Now multiply this out. Well, top multiplies top, bottom multiplies bottom. So this is 60 divided into 7 pieces. So what you're doing, if you're going to think about it as integers, convert it into integers, the top into an integer and the bottom into an integer. So what six divided by 0.7 is means really as a comparison, direct comp comparison, sort of a, something that you can wrap your head around visually, you're taking 60 and divided into seven equal pieces, right? And whatever this turns out into, what is this? Well, this turns out into, we can do the multiplication with the division, right? Oh, sorry, we're not going to do the multiplication by the division. Let's do the division. Let's do long division here. Uh, 7, 60, right? 7 doesn't go into 6. It goes into 60 how many times? It goes into it 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. Subtract, you get 4. Well, now you add your zero, you add your decimal, bring the zero down. Seven into 40 is five, so that's 35. This becomes five. You add another zero, bring it down. Seven into 50 is seven times, which is 49. So that becomes one. Bring down another zero, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> for sure, and you can convert it into uh, what do you call it, uh, mixed number, right? But as a decimal, it would be as a mixed number. This would be thank you, Graham. By the way, so eight seven goes into eight, uh, seven goes into sixty eight times, and what's left over four over seven, right? If we didn't continue this, it'd be four over seven, right? So it would be four over seven, right? As a decimal. It would be 8.571 dot dot dot, whatever it is. Okay. That's the way you can visualize it if you want. If you want to visualize it in terms of integers, right? Because this makes it an integer. Does that make sense? 
and dividing by any number which is on a number scale right if this is zero this is negative one and this is one open circle doesn't include that open circle doesn't include that if you divide any number any number by anything between which is greater than let's say you're dividing any number by x and x is greater than negative one but less than one so if x is between negative one and one if you divide any number by any number that is between negative one and one it makes the number bigger right which is a sort of a weird thing so one of the first weird things that students encounter when they're doing division it's like wait a second you're dividing this by a number why is six why is six now bigger because you're dividing by 0.7 and 0.7 it would be here 0 0.7 so if you divide any number by a number that is between negative one and one the number gets bigger right why because if you convert that number that decimal there's decimals beyond us but people <laughs> refer to this decimal this number to a fraction it's really if you're dividing by it you flip it so the 10 or the hundred or whatever it is is on the top and the other numbers in the bottom so the number is getting bigger All right does that help uh, I know I didn't do the visual part but it, it just it doesn't make sense when you're going into this level okay for me it's easier to look at it in terms of fractions 0.7 can go into six more times than one can go into six nice way of putting it grab 0.7 can go into six right more times than one can go into six that's a great way of saying it grab I'm jacking that I'm gonna start using that thank you for that by the way and gang keep this in mind I don't give a rat's ass how good any teacher you think is right another perspective can always introduce you to a different way of looking at a problem right so if you're taking a course with someone if you're trying to learn something and you're having a hard time learning it either from that student or from that book or from that video don't think the concept is too difficult to understand find yourself a new instructor maybe a new book to read or a new video to look at okay there's always another perspective that will all of a sudden make you go aha that makes sense i get it right and to me i've never thought about it this way as graham said 0.7 can go into six more times than one can go into six brilliant right brilliant thank you for that graham right joe how does this translate to the real world how does that translate into the real world if i have six items and i'm asked to divide them by 0.7 how can i do that because the answer will be 0.87 so i end up with more coins than the number i originally have uh real world graham can you think of a real world uh version of this uh, i mean there's places you have this uh, but i'm trying to think of a simple way a good question by the way uh, percentages percentages uh, 0.7 percent of six yeah yeah I'm trying to think of something right now that's more less percentage based uh, 70 percent of yeah that's the reverse of it that's the reverse of it so what Graham is saying Joe by the way is this so what you can do is reverse engineer it, right you could say hey what's 70 percent or let's do a question that way that would question that that way will be better right what if you were going to buy something right let's say you walked into a store right and they said sale sale right here's your item right and they have a tag on there saying sale price sale price is six dollars right sale price is six dollars let me write this more clearly so you see it better i'm going to erase this let's make it better 
that's a nice example actually Grant. so they say sale price sale price uh, six dollars right 70 sale price 70 percent off 70 percent off and it's six dollars what if you wanted to find the original price you would tell yourself hey the original price times the set the percent off 0 0.7 has to equal 6 so you go x is equal to 6 divided by 0 0.7 and that's going to be 8.57 so that's the original price why would you want to do this well what if you walked into another store and they said sale price sale price um 65 percent off right and it's 6.25 dollars right well what was the original price of this one right you could do a comparison or something like this right i know that's probably not a tangible one because it involves percentages eagles and cycling think shop or polar song today no i don't think he would word is out he may but who knows maybe no i don't think so cheryl especially if you're uh, a visual thinker especially if you're a visual thinker right 